I looked through my boyfriend's phone and saw that he was making plans with a girl I didn't know, so I left the house. I was wrong, and might have ruined everything. Throw away because I feel really stupid and need advice. My fiancé and I have been in a relationship for the last six years, engaged for the last two years, and we are about to get married in November 2024. Going to try and not make this long. On Monday, I woke up around 2 a.m. to go to the bathroom. As I walked past my fiancé's side of the bed, his phone went off with a message. I got curious and looked. The message was from a girl called Angie. Ev. The message said it was good to see you again, and I had a lot of fun. We should do it again sometime. I took his phone with me to the bathroom and read their chats. Nothing sexual or even flirty, but there was a bunch of conversations of meeting up at her place, what they did that day, all the fun they were having. It, and I remember yesterday that I wanted to do something with him, but he couldn't as his sister was in town and they have arranged to meet and hang out for months now. He did invite me along, but I didn't go. Didn't want to take away from his time with his sister. My thoughts immediately went to him cheating on me and I started to bawl like a baby in the bathroom. My fiancé came rushing into the bathroom to see what was jong on. I was not as quiet as I thought I was in the end. When he came close to me and asked what was jong on, I told him not to touch me. He looked hurt in that moment and took a step back. I gave him his phone and told him, Explain yourself through my tears. He took the phone, looked, and laughed. Then I saw him laughing. I got up and stormed out, locking myself in the spare bedroom. He came to the bedroom and through the door said he was sorry for laughing and tried to explain himself. Before he said anything else, I told him to leave. He then left to our bedroom. That morning before he woke up, I grabbed some of my thing and came to my sister's house. I have been here since Tuesday morning too afraid to go home. <laughs> he sent me a message that morning saying he heard and saw me leave but didn't want to stop me because of what happened the night before. Again, he said sorry for laughing, but the situation was just ridiculous in the moment and his tired brain responded with laughter. I sent back some hurtful thing and that he is a cheater. He responded with, Angie is a nickname for my sister Angelina. He told me to confirm with his sisters if I didn't believe him, and told me check FB and Insta if I need proof because picture where posted of their meetup yesterday. He didn't say anything to the hurtful thing I said to him or anything, but told me the house is open for me to come back anytime I like, and when I do, we will have a serious conversation about what happened and what will happen Jong forward. I'm scared to go home, because I feel like he will be breaking up with me and I don't want that. How can I handle this? I know I was wrong for the way I acted. I acted like a child. I overreact. How can I fix this? What can I do now? Edit. <laughs> Before someone asked, I have heard him referring to his sister as Angie in the past, but my brain didn't put it together that night. I have been at my sister's house since Tuesday morning too afraid to go home, and the only text I have gotten from him so far is asking if I'm okay, and goodnight text. Um, when I tried to talk over the phone, he says we will talk when you are home. He won't be doing it over a phone conversation. It to be had face to face. Update. I don't know what to do now. My fiancé left me. This morning, I got ready to go home. Before I left, I had a final conversation with my sister, and she basically said the same as all of you. During our conversation, the doorbell rung and my sister went to have a look at who is here so early on a Sunday. My fiancé walked in, and I was actually excited to see him. I went in to hug him, but he pushed me away. I felt hurt in that moment, and he asked to speak to me in private. We went up to the guest room where I was staying. I'm not young to say everything we discussed on here, but the short of the story is... He found it very childish for me to run out of the house without talking to him. He said he could forgive all of that because misunderstanding happened. But what he can't forgive is the way I acted and ignored him and hid from him the last week. My insecurities all throughout these years have taken a toll on him, and he is done. The fact that a conversation with his sister caused me to do all of this made him see me in a different light. I did try and explain, and he laughed at me saying my reasoning is bullshit as not just he, but the whole family refers to his sister as Angie. And I know that he even brought up instances where I called he Angie myself. I tried to tell him that when I saw the messages, my mind just went blank and he responded with stop making excuses, I'm done with this. No. He then said it better to break up because he doesn't see this relationship Jiang any further. Mm -hmm. I showed him all my stuff was packed and that I wanted to go home today. He just responded to little to late. He said it as if he was in a movie with no emotions on his face. When he looked at me, all I saw on his face for some reason is pity for me. He said he will be canceling everything, and all the money that I have spent on the wedding so far will be in my account as soon as he gets the refunds. Before he left, he just said, I hope you will find someone that will be able to handle you childishness and insecurities, but that won't be me. He brought all my thing to my sister's house. He and two of his friends unload everything on my sister lawn and left. What do I do now? I haven't been able to eat the whole day and just keep crying. How can I fix this? I was wrong, I know, but it's not fair that he will dump me because of this. Story 2. I hate my life. I hate my kid. I resent my family. 
I resent my in-laws. I resent my wife. I hate myself. I never wanted kids, but was never adamantly against having one. I get married. My wife knows how I feel about kids. When we were engaged, my answer was, maybe one, definitely not more. As my friends started having kids, I started leaning heavily against having kids. Some parents had good kids. Some parents had bad kids. Even the easy kids looked like too much work. Cue my wife's sister dying. All of a sudden, family is super important to my wife. I get that. At this point, my answer to kids was still no. My wife bothered me and bothered and bothered me. Eventually, I was convinced. The deal was her parents would sell their ranch and come live on our street. I was convinced. I was so dumb. I was told not to worry about all the realities of having a kid and losing my life, because grandma and grandpa are down the street and would be all the parents baby ever needed. Since my wife's sister died, she was the only hope for grandkids. My wife and her parents worked me over so good. They convinced me. They made good points. My wife's parents were in their 50s and good health. They would be here beyond the baby phase and would have enough energy to keep up with a kid. I'm shown enough Disney movies and Kodak moment and am promised that I just have to be a good dad and provider. A 1950s dad, if you will. One where the mom unfairly does all the hard stuff. All the good and no bad? Cool. Fine by me. Well, here we are, 11 years later. My kid has ODD, which is pretty much alphabet soup for your kid being an asshole and defiant. Nothing else is wrong with them. The diagnosis is literally that they are vindictive and cruel and seek conflict. Not because they can't communicate or are hips are sensitive to stimuli, but just because. Guess what? Grandma and Grandpa say the kid is too much. They haven't helped for more than a day a month in almost seven years. And here I am, on Reddit on my laptop, tethered to my phone in a parking lot at the park after dark. I came home from work to my son spitting on the neighbors to doorknob, his reason get the neighbors sick. Why does he want them sick? His Amazon package got delivered to their house in the morning, and they waited until evening to give it to him. Well, in returning to for telling him not to do that, my son went into the attic and peed all over the one banker's box of memorabilia I have from my parents, who both died before I was 20. I left the house and am sitting in my car. I don't know if I'm coming back. And I don't want advice. This isn't lack of discipline or bad parenting. I've read every book, I've worked shifts six days a week for a decade to pay for tens of thousands, probably 100 thousands, of therapy, behaviorists, counseling, classes, you name it. At the end of the day, it is my fault. I am so spineless. I knew I didn't want kids. I was convinced because, well, I'm a jellyfish. And here I am, 45 years old, crying in my car in the park. My advice to other men and women out there, only have a kid if you 1,000% want them. Don't listen to others when they say they'll help. They'll help if you have a happy, bubbly, easygoing kid. Not if you spawned the devil himself, 